The bottom line is climate change has happened, is happening, and will continue to happen. So when we build going forward, not only do we have to build in such a way or a manner and using the right materials that can withstand the extreme weather events that we're facing today, we also have to anticipate those that will be realized 25 or 50 years into the future. So the biggest challenge for Canadians in reference to climate change and extreme weather events are problems associated with too much water in the wrong place or flooding. Flooding is the number one challenge in Canada due to uh, climate change, extreme weather events. But that's not to say that drought, fire, wind, hail, snow load, permafrost loss aren't also all important. Governments at all level in this country, federally, provincially, municipally, should be working towards pushing or enforcing three new standards that are being developed in the country to mitigate flood risk. One is a standard for new residential community design. How do we build new residential communities going forward with fundamental features in place that lower the probability of those communities flooding out? Number two is a new flood standard being developed for existing communities in Canada to mitigate flood risk. How can we use berms, diversion channels, holding ponds, etc., to lower the probability of flooding in existing communities? And third, we have developed a new standard to mitigate flood risk at the level of the individual house, the homeowner level. One of the expressions of climate change that we're seeing right now with increasing frequency is the large scale discharge of water en masse. The big floods hit, the water comes down and increases the magnitude of flowing water systems, rivers by maybe a hundred times. At that time, we want to make sure that the culverts, the areas that the water flows through to allow discharge, by having them built of concrete versus lighter materials, will help maintain the structural integrity of that system when these big pressures hit. Concrete can build, bring a structural integrity to the design that'll make it such the probability of that structure being damaged under threat of flood is much, much lower than if we built it out of less resilient or resistant material. So we really have to think about structural integrity of systems that can withstand the threats that are coming at us. One of the prominent factors and challenges we're facing in the country is fire. So picture yourself in a building and there's a wall of fire coming at you. Which building would you rather be in? A building built of concrete or a building built of wood? When fires hit, which are happening with increasing frequency in Canada, in reference to underground piping, but underground but near the surface, when we have piping that's made of concrete, it maintains its structural integrity. Very often when we have piping made of plastic, it melts and breaks down when the severe fires hit. Effectively, concrete offers a material that is flood resistant, fire resistant, wind resistant, and hail resistant. This is very important in reference to the increasing pressures and threats of climate change and extreme weather risk. One of the biggest challenges relative to climate change and expression of extreme weather events, the threats and the impacts on structural integrity are increasing as a function of time. We are far better off to build right in the first place for a little bit of added increment on cost up front which will produce tremendous savings down the road in reference to damage which now doesn't occur because we built it right in the first place. By building adaptation into the system, what we're really realizing is the gift that keeps on giving. 